Masking is my personal savior. Without masking, I couldn't do most of the Photoshop work I do. Now, I showed you selections in the last movie, and that certainly is an aspect of masking, but masking is much more than that. And so, what does masking mean exactly? I don't know. Well, masking just means that you are isolating a change to a particular part of an image by blocking that change from occurring over the other parts of the image. Oh. So, if you think of the idea of what a mask is, say, for instance, stencil type, so if you have a stencil for a letter and you put it down on a piece of paper and you spray paint over that stencil, the paint goes through the hole in the stencil. You lift the stencil up, you see the letter. Where the stencil was covering the paper, you don't see any paint. And so that's what masking is. It just blocks the effect from affecting the canvas in that particular spot. So if you look over here at the layers window right here, I've created two hue saturation layers that kind of drastically affect the color. So this first one I'm going to turn on, you'll see affects the color of the image overall. Now, I didn't point this out earlier, but if you look in this hue saturation layer, you will see that there is this little symbol on the left, and if you click on that, that will show you what the settings are here in the properties window. But there's also a little white box on the right, which you can also click to make active. That represents the masking that is applied to the image. And so this is completely white or clear, and that means that no masking is currently occurring in the image. Now, the layer up above this is another hue saturation layer. So I'm gonna turn this one off and turn this one on, and you'll see that the effect is exactly the same settings as, as the other layer, but it's only being applied to the sky and it's leaving the sign alone. Well, if you look at that masking box right there, you'll notice that this has been partially masked out. You can see that little black shape in there. Oh. M -G. Now I'm going to hit a key. I'm going to hit the backwards slash key, which is just next to the bracket keys. And this will turn on a visual aid that shows where the mask is being applied. So anywhere you see this kind of bright red showing up, that means the effect is being blocked from the image. So I'm going to hit the same key to turn that off. And that is how masking works. Okay, so let's go over to this other image and uh, let's mess with this child again, shall we? Okay! I want to kind of recover a little bit of what we did in the last video with selection tools and then show you how you can easily convert that into a mask. And so I'm going to zoom in on the eyeball right here. Ew. And so what I want to do is I want to change the color of his eye. And so what's going to be the best way to do that? Dang. Well, I would think that the elliptical marquee would be a good place to start since this is mostly an ellipse. And so I'm going to get that tool and I'm just going to draw that shape and make it as good as I can. And I'm even going to go in here and use my transform selection and just make that fit the eyeball as well as I can. So obviously, uh, this isn't exactly the right shape uh, because his uh, eyelids are getting in the way. But that's pretty good, and I'm not going to worry if it's not exactly perfect because, uh, remember, I'm zoomed in uh, a whole bunch of times. So now that I've transformed uh, my selection just the way I want it, I'll click on the check mark to execute it, and that's good. Now, how do I fix this? Well, I'm going to get my lasso tool now. And remember, I showed you these boxes that allows you to just have a new selection, add to your selection, but the third one over is subtract from selection. And so what that means is that wherever I draw a shape, it will subtract it from the selection I currently have. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to draw this shape along the bottom of the eyelid, and then I'm going to go back around and connect it, and you'll see when I do so that it subtracts from that selection. So I'm going to do the same thing now with the bottom of the eyelid. 
come back around to connect to it, and that subtracts from that selection. So I'm going to reduce my view here to fit in window. All right, so I want to change the color of the eyeball. Well, you know how to do this already. Yes. We're going to do it non-destructively, and we're going to use an adjustment layer. I'm going to go to the layer window, uh, click on the little yin-yang symbol, and I'm going to choose hue saturation to change the color. And I am going to click on colorize because anytime you have something that's fairly neutral color, which, which the eyeballs are here, uh, they're pretty gray, uh, they won't change very much. So, but if I click colorize, that will force the issue. And you'll see right away that it will change the color of the eye. Now, you also may notice that the selection is gone. Uh, why did Photoshop just throw out the selection we spent all that time making? What? Well, Photoshop said, oh, he's making an adjustment layer and he has a selection, so I guess he wants to apply it to just that part of the image. So I'm going to help this guy out and uh, go ahead and just make a mask for him. Groovy. So if you look up here, this would normally be a completely white rectangle, but you'll notice it's almost completely black now. There's just this one little spot of white. And so what that is, is Photoshop made a mask for me, taking my selection and saying, oh, well, the part inside of the selection, he wants to change. Everything outside of it, he doesn't. So I'll block that effect out and make it all black. And so that's really handy. So now I have a mask that I can use. And now I can go and change this color to anything I want. Change the saturation, the lightness, the darkness, all that. So that's how masking works. Now that works for adjustment layers, but will it work if you do it directly on an image? You know, for instance, let me go back to the Joshua tree sign. What if I wanted to get rid of the sky? How could I do that? I don't want to know. Well, there's different ways I could do it. I could create a selection and then apply a mask to the image. Or another way I could do it is just by painting. And so I'm going to throw out these two adjustment layers. And so I am back to just my image. So how do I apply a mask to just the image? Well, it's really quite easy. If you go down here next to the adjustment layer icon, just to the left of it, looks like a little Japanese flag, a little white rectangle with a dot in the middle. If I click on that with my image layer active, it will add a mask to that layer. So you can see it just gives me a white rectangle. Now, this is the cool part. I can go in and just paint my mask. No way. And so if I get the brush tool, and I need to make sure that that mask rectangle is currently active. It has those little white corner things around it. And then the other thing that's important is I need to pay attention to what my foreground and background colors are. And anytime you have a mask selected, it will only work in black and white and grays. And so I wanna make sure that my foreground color is black and my background color is white. If they're not, then I can click on these little tiny squares up here to reset the defaults and then click on the transpose to bring the black square to the front. And now you'll notice that when I paint over the sky here, that all of a sudden I'm seeing checkerboards coming through. And if you remember what the checkerboard represents is transparency. So anytime you see transparency, it means there's nothing there. If you look at the mask, you'll see that there is a black line now in the mask, and that is what is effectively blocking that sky from showing. And so obviously my brush tool is a little too soft in the edge, so I'm going to right click and I'm going to make the hardness of the this be about 50%, which is normally where I start. And then I'm going to make my brush be a little smaller by hitting the left bracket key. And then finally, this is very important, I'm going to zoom in so I can see better what I'm doing. So you always want to kind of work as large as you can. Now I've zoomed in till I can see the pixels, so that's a little bigger than I like. So I'm going to go back out just till I can't see the pixels make my brush a little bit smaller, and then I can go in and I can paint out the sky. So my brush can be a little harder than that. And all I'm doing here is creating a mask. Now, here's the beautiful thing. This is non-destructive. 
I am not actually removing the background. I'm just keeping it from showing up. So could I do the same thing with the eraser tool? Absolutely. In fact, a lot of people, when they're learning, that's what they tend to do. And there's really nothing wrong with it, except you are destructively editing. You are literally erasing the pixels that are in the background. Whereas if you use a mask, it is non-destructive. And I can get those pixels back anytime I want. And so if I click on this little square while I hold the shift key, you will see that that turns off the mask. It puts a little X inside of it and that my sky is still there. But when I shift click on that mask again, it will turn the mask back on and you can see my sky is effectively being masked out. So here is my finished mask. If I turn off that mask for a minute, you can see that the sky is indeed still there and I'll turn it back on. But this is a completely non-destructive way of getting rid of parts of the image. This also gives me the ability to change the background. I just made a layer with flat color behind it, but this could easily be another image that is behind this image. So you can start to get a sense for how powerful masking can be and definitely something you're going to want to learn how to do. Totally for sure.